Hello and welcome to Between the Headlines, Press TV's newspaper review show with uh, me, Afshin Ratansi, live from London. A reminder to all our viewers first, you can take part in the debate. Text your comments to plus four four seven eight double zero double zero eight zero eight six, or send us an email to bth at uk. Details are on our website, our main website. Let us know uh, your thoughts about today's topics. In the studio, I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Healy, a spokesperson for the London Green Party and a candidate for the Green Party, and Mark Wadsworth, journalist and editor of thelatest.com. And uh, we'll also be speaking to Alexander Coburn, the editor of the political newsletter Counterpunch. And following that, we'll have uh, former CIA political analyst, that's political analyst for the CIA, uh, and author of two books on Palestine, Kathleen Christensen, on the line from New Mexico in the United States. Well, while the global economic collapse continues apace, uh, some are fretting about progress in combating global warming. Activists say that an economic depression shouldn't mean that governments shirk their responsibilities in the face of climate change. But is global warming quite what the green advocates say it is? Delegates have been gathering in New York to be skeptical. In the Middle East, meanwhile, there's plenty of skepticism about the policies of President Barack Obama. As the Gaza convoy to deliver aid arrived in the besieged strip, Israel was again bombing Gaza. But uh, who pays for the bombs? It's the United States. And it wasn't long ago that uh, U.S. groups were paying for bombs in Britain. Here in Britain, the newspapers are dominated by the return of militant activity to what some regard as occupied Ireland. We'll be taking a look at all these issues, starting with the global warming debate. Tuesday's New York Times. Global warming skeptics gather to disbelieve. It says in the New York Times on Tuesday, more than 600 self-professed climate skeptics meeting in New York to challenge what has become a broad scientific and political consensus that uh, without big changes in energy choices, humans will dangerously heat up the planet. It's a three-day international conference. Exxon uh, Mobil used to uh, fund it before, and it was uh, the uh, Heartland, uh, Heartland uh, Institute that uh, are uh, something to do with it. But we have someone who's at this conference challenging the uh, orthodoxy on uh, global warming. Alexander Coburn, editor of Counterpunch, is on the line from New York. Uh, Alex, um, what, what is this conference about? Uh, it's it's um, completely against what uh, most newspapers, what most media, what most politicians uh, believe to be true. I should just say one thing, Abshin, that I'm the co-editor of Counterpunch, my dear friend uh, Jeffrey Sinclair, and I salute one of our main contributors also on your show, Cathy Christensen. As for New York, uh, it's through the two-day gathering, um, what was interesting to me was there were a very large number of scientists um, from around the world. Uh, if you had to say what the consensus was, I think it would start from something you don't read in all those newspapers, including the New York Times, which is, by the way, whose initial report. I think the guy who wrote that story actually has a vested interest because he's written a children's book about global warming, uh, saying that it's one of the great menaces that face mankind. I think that what what that is that the world has actually been cooling since about 1998, and the trend lines indicate quite exactly that the world will get will be up now on at least for the next 25 years on a cooling trend. Something that I think recognised by a lot of the warming faction, because now they're talking about uh, climate change rather than global warming. And I think one of the major issues that people are discussing here is that if the global warming <coughs> turns out to be the fantasy that I personally think it is, then what does it really tell us about economic policy that we're about to plunge into decades of costly taxes, carbon taxes, cap and trade business, and the like, all of which will be particularly adverse to third world countries who will be gravely impacted by the rise in the cost of energy. And what this might well turn out to be, which I thought it has been for quite a long time, is essentially a middle-class environmental crusade that will end up penalizing poor people and using a hysteria to do so. Before we, before, we, uh, before, we get, before we get to that stage, uh, just on the rubbishing of climate change, and of course I'll go to Dr. Joseph Healy in, in a second, but uh, Alex, uh, talking about 25-year trend, trends over 25 years, I mean, I, in a previous incarnation I was a Lloyd's Risk Analyst. The Earth is six billion years old. Do you think uh, 
Do you think there's any point in talking about the Earth cooling over 25 year periods, 100 year, 200, 1,000 years? Well, no, I, I agree with you that there's long term, short term trends, but since the hysteria on the warming front is based on a warm trend since about 1974, which is when we came out of a cooling trend before that, it seems fair to say, to point out, that although CO2, which is always regarded as the huge culprit, has been rising fairly steadily because of the warming trend caused by CO2, uh, then you're going to have a cooling trend. Therefore, the relationship between heat, warming, and CO2 is thrown into question. And also, if you're going to say, well, why are you talking about a short cycle? I could respond to you, and I do respond to you. Well, of course, the, heat, the recent warming cycle was extremely short. You're absolutely right in the larger sense that there are long, long-term cooling and warming trends. There was the medieval warming period, the Little Ice Age. Or if you want to go back, we are in an interglacial period, and you can look at much longer perspectives. One of the reasons why most geologists actually think that all talk about humanly induced climate change is complete nonsense is precisely, as you say, because they think and they look back at very long-term cyclical changes in weather, when okay. there were very warm periods long before Henry Ford ever drove a motor car out of his garage. Dr. Joseph uh, Healy, uh, it's a middle-class conspiracy, and uh, you and your uh, Green Party are a part of it. What do you say? Uh, well, I think we're quite familiar with that, that charge being made, you know, about the green movement and those um, trying to actually abate the worst aspects of climate change. But in fact, it's going to be the, um, the developing world and the poorer countries that are going to suffer the most from this. And we've already seen indications of this in the Maldives, for example, where the government is actually putting in place plans uh, to, you know, find alternative space for its, its population to live. We're going to see uh, large numbers of climate refugees. We're already seeing this in... Africa and the Sahara region and so on. So in fact, it's going to be those people who suffer the most from the impact of climate change. But you're talking about short-term trends again. Uh, well, I mean, what uh, Alexander Coburn said is true in the sense that there have been, you know, cyclical periods and there have been, for example, in the, the Middle Ages, you know, there was the warming period and there was a cooling period in the 17th century and so on. But despite all of that, all the evidence still is the 